This year we celebrate 50 years of Weidmüller in Australia. The German company Weidmüller saw fit to send some people to Australia in 1972 to start up a Weidmüller company here. Since 2004, we've been developing high power LED solutions for lighting unusual situations from the headlights of the Indian Pacific to where we are today in the central west of New South Wales at Wellington Caves, where we see examples of LED lighting solutions that were installed about 10 years ago. When we originally started developing LED show cave lights back in about 2004, most of the high powered LEDs were quite into the blue spectrum. They're fairly cold, you know, 6,000 degrees Kelvin. That's not the best thing to have in a cave. But we found over the years that it was much better to go closer to the incandescent colour temperatures. And at the moment, the latest products that we're producing are closer to 2,700 to 3,000 degrees Kelvin. I'll just put one light here. Um, this is about 3,000 degrees Kelvin. Um, very, very efficient light. This is only 11 watts in total. Um, the way we make the lights, we make them with different beam angles. This one is, is quite narrow, about six degrees. And we can use that to highlight a particular feature. We can then bring in a, a wider beam light, which you can see I've brought in at the bottom here. Uh, it's about 40 degrees and that gives us uh, the effect of seeing some nice shadows in those uh, uh, rim pools at the bottom there. Through uh, research, I'm finding there is an interaction between uh, the animals that live in the cave, particularly cave crickets, uh, were not reproducing under the influence of the very bluish white LED lights. But in response to that, we're no longer doing the really cool lights. We're making them much warmer, something much closer to the incandescent lights that have been here for many, many years, although at a much uh, reduced power consumption. That now, the, because of COVID, started doing some research about impact from lights. And then when the visitors came back, you could see the impact because the lights were going on, but the body heat from the people and the breathing changed the humidity. I can tell you that a typical tour in this cave can change this by half a degree. It can dry features out, so the water we talked about a little while ago can have an increased evaporative rate. So it changes the natural process. It's, not, it's a negative, but it's also an important part of education of people and then conservation due to that. It's got a design life of, of at least 20 years in a cave situation also being fully waterproof and dustproof. Should there be a flood at any time, uh, this is fully protected. Uh, they're tested down to 10 metres underwater. So in total, this is only 22 watts. So as you can see, it, you don't need a lot of energy to light a show cave with LED lights. Here we have some wide Miller switch mode power supplies. So on one side we have the uh, 240 volt mains, or in this case it's 415 three phase coming in from the surface, and we're converting it to a safe extra low 24 volts DC. Here we have two power supplies so that should something unthinkable happen and one of these fails, the other power supply automatically takes over. To make it even safer, we've added battery backup, which is in this cabinet here. So even if someone is on a tour, and there is a mains failure, they wouldn't even know inside the cave. In today at Wellington, there used to be 8,000 watts of floodlights behind us, and now that's down to about 250 watts of LED lights. So the heat burden on the cave is greatly reduced, the reliability is much better, and I think aesthetically, what you see is much more enhanced.